what can I say? I fell in love with Ecuador. I mean, what's there not to love about this place? As if the countless cascadas that are raging through the Andean jungles, that's uh, waterfalls for all you gringos, as if that's not enough of a reason for you to fly down to South America, then perhaps the iconic stained glass windows or the stone steeples of the city's famed church, La Basilica del Voto Nacional. And if you adrenaline junkies need your fix, there is always a kilometer long zip line that propels your body over death defying heights overlooking spiraling rivers. But before you hear about all of that, you could come here for one reason alone the soup. That's right, the soup alone is worth traveling the 3,000 plus miles. You see, this is no ordinary soup. Here in Ecuador, soups are a symbol of culinary tradition and a very delicious source of comfort food when in the high altitude of the Andean mountain range. Now, excuse me while I order my morning juice. She pretty much already knew what I wanted because she remembered me from yesterday. I mean, that's how they are here. And I have a feeling if I were to come back a year from now, she would probably remember me then too. Now back to this soup. Sancocho. It's a very popular broth-based soup with hearty foods in it, like yuca, corn, plantain, and perhaps guinea pig. One of my favorites was sopa de yuca. It was a much creamier soup, had various vegetables and white pescado. Delish. When visiting a new country or city, I particularly like to find a vantage point where I'm able to get my sense of direction back after the long flight. To me, it's important to see the layout of the city to best understand my plan going about to see as much as I can in this new foreign land. Hola, que paso? All you travel lovers out there, as you can see, I made it to the top of this beautiful mountain above the city of Quito. Quito lies in the middle of Ecuador, it's the capital city, and I'm on top of the mountain called Cruz de Loma. And uh, I must say that my, I'm very short of breath because we're 4,100 meters above sea level, so we're like halfway up to where the airplanes are flying right now. But luckily for us, it's not too cold because here in Ecuador, they pretty much get year-round spring-like temperatures. So when you come here to Cruz Loma, you're gonna make sure that you take the Teleferico, which is like a, a cable car that's on a wire. It takes you to the top of the mountain. It's actually kind of scary. If you're afraid of heights, I recommend uh, maybe not looking down. But when you get to the top, it's well worth it, I promise. What's up guys? So I've made it to the city of Baños. It's about four hours outside of Quito here in Ecuador. And as soon as I got off the bus, I couldn't help but notice tons of this taking place. Now what it is, it's actually sugarcane that's been processed down and it's made into a caramel. The proper name for it is Melcocha de la Caña de Sucar, which basically just means caramel of sugarcane. But it's really good. And uh, is it possible un poco más? Claro. Si. Bueno, muchas gracias. They're very friendly here as you can see. But I wanted to try this on camera because it's not like anything else I've ever tasted. It's not like your ordinary caramel because it's got more of a fruity taste to it. And it's definitely got like this fresh stickiness that is like no caramel you've ever seen in your whole life. Anyways, I thought I'd share this crazy delicacy that you only find here in Ecuador. So when you come, get some for yourself. Know what they ama? Jorge. Jorge. See Jorge, he's right across the street from the bus station, and he's got it for you. Tell him I sent you. Mm. As you can see, I'm getting ready to put my life on the uh, edge here and go. I'm actually getting ready to go down one of the largest canopies in Ecuador. It's actually about a mile long, or it's a kilometer long, a little bit short of a mile, but it's the largest and longest 
canopy in Ecuador. So we're gonna go over the river. And, uh, hopefully I'll be able to tell you all about it when I get the other side. So let's go. Rolling with the homie. <laughs> <Que> pasa? <laughs> Hollywood. I don't know where we are right now, but we just did a canopy that was crazy. And he just told me that if I want to do it again, he's gonna give me a hookup on the special. So how that be him? Just rode the longest canopy in Ecuador. Here I am in the beautiful city of Baños. Come to find out that means bathroom in Spanish, but this is far from a bathroom. You can see behind me there's waterfalls coming off the Andean cliff sides, and this is probably one of the most peaceful and relaxing cities I've ever experienced. So I woke up at like 5 a.m. to meet other locals because they are known to frequent the La Piscina de la Virgin, which is known to have healing powers of some sort. Nonetheless, I enjoyed the lava heated water that was pouring off of the cliffside. I highly recommend it. I encourage you. To come here to Banos. It's about four hours outside of Quito, but it's well worth the trip. So I'll see you when you get here. Ecuador is filled with suspension bridges, all of which seem very, very unstable. But it's a part of living life, so I'm about to cross an extension bridge that is shaking in the wind. It kind of reminds me of the Golden Gate Bridge, how it shakes in the wind. Woo! Don't look down whatever you do. As you can see, I'm standing here below. One of the largest freaking waterfalls in the whole country of the Ecuador. You don't want to make sure you check this out. Woo! After visiting the Pailon del Diablo Cascada, I was eager to venture into the town of Baños to take some captivating photos on my camera. Check out some of my shots. People always ask me, how is it that you can afford to travel so much? My response to them is always the same. How can you afford not to? You see, life isn't about getting caught up in this rat race and some attempt to fit into the box of what society defines as successful. The true beauty of life isn't discovered through money, fame, or obtaining meaningless possessions that will deteriorate over time. The most valuable asset you could ever own are the experiences that you live and the relationships that you earn. No one can ever take away those God-given moments that are locked within the vaults of your memory banks waiting to be relived, remembered, and reshared, sparking the flame of curiosity in others to come. It's crazy, man. We're 
at the bottom of a base of a waterfall, live in the Andes Mountains. I'm happy. Can you tell I'm happy right now? Because this is what living life is all about. Uno, dos, tres. So we just caught lunch. Oh, wait. And it's still alive. Here, lunch. Now this is what you call fresh lunch. I'm about to make me some trout, fry this trout up. We just caught it in the river. But you know, no hormones, only fresh. <laughs> Yo, what's up? Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video along with all the other videos that you've watched during my experiences and travels around the world. You've shared them with so many of your friends that have accumulated hundreds of thousands of views and I've actually now attracted the attention of several tourism departments. So because of you, I'm gonna have the opportunity to travel the world and record videos and document different cultures and experiences that are out there for everyone to see one day, hopefully. So thank you so much for your time and again, subscribe right here, click that little button, subscribe, share with your friends, and I thank you so much because without you, this will not be possible.